and she said that if I wanted to be with her, that I should just get used to the idea of never having sex with her again in our relationship. She's really happy with where just being here with me and being my wife, but not wanting affection and attention and all those things. The following program is intended for a mature audience. Viewer discretion is advised. This I've got to see. It's worth watching, so stay tuned. Can you give us a give us a specific instance of you of when you're trying this you're trying to initiate affection this is the man that i want to be these are part of my values and yet at the same time i know she needs space and you know, she's either passively or more actively setting boundaries around this everything from like fuck you i don't want any touch ever again you know otherwise yeah. uh, to potentially just kind of shutting down or not reacting like acting like a statue so catch yeah. us up with you with a specific example Oh, gosh, there's so many over the last three years uh, of this. Um, my, my wife essentially told me three years ago, the whole I love you, but not sure if I'm in love with you, need to figure out who I am, need to figure out if this is what I want. Um, and she said that if I wanted to be with her, that I should just get used to the idea of never having sex with her again in our relationship. She's really happy with where just being here with me and being my wife, but not wanting affection and attention and all those things. Um, so, you know, for a long time, I, I just respected that for about three years. We didn't have sex for three years at all. Um, we barely held hands. Uh, we, we would, you know, kiss goodnight, but I, it's the way that I would kiss my grandma goodnight. You know what I mean? It wasn't, it wasn't anything that I was happy so with or passionate tongue. about. <laughs> full, full yes, time. exactly, okay. exactly. We sloppy, really sloppy. <laughs> um, but you know, less mustache, which was nice. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, um, you know, I just this this past month uh, in in May, um, I found out that she is having an affair with another man that it has made her feel alive again and sexy and it has made her feel closer to me than she ever has before. This is a, this is a married man who's told her this has an expiration date will be done shortly, whatever it is, but it just, you know, so now we're dealing with that and she's realizing the man that she had at home is better than any other man she's ever going to find out anywhere is what so let me jump yeah so thank you let me jump in right there so that 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 was great that was a lot already which is good yeah. so what do you mean by she's realizing that the man i have at home is better than any other man or how do you mean she told me you're a better husband you're a better father you're a better provider you're a better everything than than i realized that you were you know because she'd been telling me for a long time that if I disappeared tomorrow, all she'd miss was a paycheck. Mm -hmm. And now she, you know, I think the guilt has, has made her really introspective. Um, she's not really showing a lot of remorse yet and, and to the hurt that she's bringing to me. Um, but she's coming to a lot of realizations about who I am as a person. Um, I'm also very focused on myself right now and my personal well-being, my mental health, my physical health. Um, and, you know, that I think she's starting to realize if her behavior continues and her actions continue, she's going to lose me and the life that we've built with our children and, and everything else. And while I don't want that fear to be her motivator, I want her to choose me. Um, I think that she's, she's just coming to a lot of realizations right now. Okay. Yeah. I totally get what you're saying. So there's a few things that are popping in my mind. I want to ask you to dive into a little, can I dive more deeply into that, Patrick? Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. So part of me is wondering, well, have you been like, have, have you been like, you know, uh, crying in the basement for the past three years, you know, like, holy fuck that let's start there. No. Yeah. No, I haven't been crying in the basement. Um, I've been, to be honest, probably half-assing this work, right? And 
that, um, you know, with the, the idea that, oh, once she sees me doing this, she'll want me again, or this and that, right? Those covert contracts from, from yeah. Mr. Nice Guy, right? And um, this was a real huge wake-up call for me. Uh, this is a woman that on day one told me, you'll never have to worry about me stepping out on you because it's happened to me before and I know how much it hurts. And it was never something that was even on my radar. And um, so it was a huge wake up call for me to understand I have to do this work for real and I have to do it only for me with no fucks given about what she wants or what she needs right now um, because she's a grown woman and she's gonna make her own decisions. Uh, and, but I need to understand who I am and what I want so that if she doesn't make the decisions that are conducive to my values and morals, then I have to make the, the, you know, the hard choices uh, in my life. And so I needed to steel myself and I needed to, you know, harden my resolve uh, to do what needs to be done regardless. Um, and, and, and work on only me for no other reason to be the best me that I can possibly be. Yeah, absolutely. So where do you feel your values are now? So there's you, there's her, and there's a relationship, right? So you right. can't control her. It's a recognition of her. It's a recognition yeah. of what she's going through. Then there's you. And I'm wondering about, well, if you could, sp if I ask you right now, what are these newfound values or how have you grown the roots of your oak tree, if you will? And then I'll ask about the relationship. Um, I think the, the main values, you know, for me are I have to make decisions for me, whether they're hard or not. Um, I have to do what's best for me. I have to honor that and be genuine in my uh, understanding of what I want. Um, I also, you know, for me, a, a long-term relationship is a monogamous relationship. Uh, it, so I cannot allow this, which is what she's asking for. She says, it's, it's lighting me up for you so I want to continue this with an open relationship. And that's not something that I want. Um, so communicating that boundary to her that this is not, this is not what I want. And if it continues, I have to make the hard decision to separate from this. Um, and then, you know, the, the not be afraid of the future because the future is mine to write, and it's not, uh, it's not predetermined based off of anyone else's choices but mine. So those are the, the, the things that I'm really um, working on right now. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I mean, so let me honor you for a moment here that it's obvious that you've been growing your roots. It's obvious that you've been doing your work, right? And you said that in the Hey, I was kind of half-assing it. And you said that without flinching, like not uh, I'm a victim or not I'm a piece of crap or anything like that. It was just a matter of fact. So I love that. It's cool. Um, you and I have talked a little bit recently, of course, and I chatted with Cynthia about the relationship part of this and the woman's part of this uh, the past few days, past week or so. And so I want her to come in here in a moment. But let me ask you one more question about you as a man, which is vitally important to like literally every fucking man on the planet really right all of the masculine if you will within all of us right which women have and men have but especially for a man and his masculine is what are you on fire about for your own self so you said i need to just you know not give any fucks and all that i agree yeah. right so what what like excites you when you get up in the morning is the simple question um so my whole life uh i have adamantly and aggressively been against running like really really against it like and I would tell people I don't run unless there's a lot of people chasing me and they got to be big because I have two black belts and I'll fuck up a bunch of small dudes. <laughs> so um so in the end of May I just started running and she's I think I've ran 80 miles since the end of May um every other day I'm up and I'm running my clothes don't fit me anymore they're falling off of me. Uh, women are looking at me everywhere that I go. My wife is noticing and is getting real um, uh, complimentary in ways that she's never been in my whole life. Uh, and 
just, you know, every other day I'm, I'm running three to five miles. And then the other days I'm in the gym and I take Saturdays off and I'm just really, I'm on fire about getting myself physically fit so that I can be mentally fit. Um, the other thing that I'm really on fire about is I, I'm, I'm a professional guitar player in Austin, Texas, and I don't really have an online presence or, or anything like that. And so I'm now, I've, I've now started every day, um, just playing on Instagram and starting to build up a, a, a presence and, and hopefully start to get noticed. And I just want to be recognized for the skill that I've cultivated over the years and years. And, and I'm, uh, I'm putting myself out there and not worrying about the critique that I might get for it. So, <laughs> okay. Fucking cool. And badass and running and you're the man and holy shit, black belts. And I don't want to mess with you. So I'm going to give you some man feedback. That was great. And like, it felt a little bit rote. Right. And that's cool. And like, we don't know each other personally. So maybe that's you at your most excited. I don't know. Like, yes, I just won a billion dollars and my woman's <laughs> mouth is on my cock right now. And yeah, I'm a fucking famous guitar. Maybe that's just you all the time. I don't know. Right. And that's cool. And you're here with us and whatever. Um, it kind of looked like a job interview a little bit, you know, like that's cool. Totally cool. Uh, I'm not asking you to be fake. It's just a little bit of feedback. And again, maybe I'm just I did a little different constitution and I lose myself a little bit and more in my emotions. And I admit that. And that's cool. Uh, like it all kind of came from your head and like some heart, but like not a lot of balls. Right. Like that's what it felt like to me. So I'm, so I'm going to jump over to Cynthia here. And um, what did you feel when Patrick was sharing what he was on fire about? And then I'll ask you, we've talked about a little bit about, the spot that he's in relationship wise. So let's kind of segue into that. So Patrick, thank you very much, man. I'm gonna have Cynthia talk for a bit because I talked too fucking much. Yeah, dude, that was awesome. So what came across with Patrick when I asked him what he was on fire about from a woman's point of view, from your professional point of view? Yeah, well, actually the part of myself that got the most activated, Patrick, when you were sharing was the more like, I like the amount of like respect I have for you. And it was almost like more of my masculine. I was like, oh my God, you're fucking cool. And you're doing all this stuff. And like, I want to like run every other day. And like, I kind of felt like it was like, man, this is an awesome dude. The, the feminine part of me was kind of more still like, and I know this, you're talking to other men right now, of course. Um, the feminine didn't feel a lot into what you were saying to like dance with that so like you're badass and and then like the feminine was like kind of feeling on the other side of that on the uh couldn't really touch the emotion of that um and I think about that with I mean this the container you're holding for family and your wife right now is unbelievable what she says about she goes out and she gets lit up with another gentleman and then comes home. Um, that's why I'm kind of tying in that piece, that feminine part of me was a little dormant because I almost feel like, so I should now try to get a little bit more feminine elsewhere so I can bring that back to you in this moment, if that hits home at all. Okay, so yeah, let me ask from there. Um... I mean, first of all, kind of the punchline, Patrick, is embodying it more, like breathing down into your stomach, breathing into your balls, feeling your feet on the ground, feeling I, I like try to picture speaking from my thighs, like almost from my legs, if you will, my thighs, that kind of a thing. And some of it's practice body language, you know, like um, and slowing down certain time. Uh, and it's cool. You're in front of us and you're I asked you a question and that's cool. And we kind of well, how we practice is how we act it out in life too, right? So, so that's the quick body language and the simple stuff like that. And I'm sure you do that from stage when you're playing and all these things. Just some feedback on this, you know, and, and there's three years, at least three years of sediments on top of things and related. I get like, totally get it. To watch the rest of this episode for free and other episodes, go to greatmenmovemountains.com slash VIP. Punch in your info and watch the rest 
for free. Get more affection, love and sex in your marriage. Get less paralyzing fear and rejection. Never miss an episode. Watch anytime, anywhere, 3 a.m. on the toilet. Get full episodes. GreatMenMoveMountains.com forward slash VIP. The C-Note Show.